Kamala Devi Harris A slash AM Bell DVI slash Listen K A H M L Devi to three born October 20, 1964 is an American politician and attorney who is the 49th and current Vice President of the United States. She is the first female Vice President and the highest ranking female official in U.S. history as well as the first African-American and first Asian-American vice president. For five a member of the Democratic Party, she previously served as the Attorney General AG of California from 2011 to 2017 and as a U.S. Senator representing California from 2017 to 2021. Born in Oakland, California, Harris graduated from Howard University and the University of California, Hastings College of the Law. She began her career in the office of the district attorney DA of Alameda County, before being recruited to the San Francisco DA's office and later the city attorney of San Francisco's office. In 2003, she was elected DA of San Francisco. She was elected AG of California in 2010 and re-elected in 2014. Harris served as the junior U.S. Senator from California from 2017 to 2021. She defeated Loretta Sanchez in the 2016 Senate election to become the second African-American woman and the first South Asian-American to serve in the U.S. Senate. 67 As a senator, she advocated for health care reform, federal descheduling of cannabis, the path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants, the DREAM Act, a ban on assault weapons, and progressive tax reform. She gained the national profile for her pointed questioning of Trump administration officials during Senate hearings, including Trump's second Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh, who was accused of sexual assault. A. Harris sought the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination, but withdrew from the race prior to the primaries. She was selected by Joe Biden to be his running mate, and their ticket went on to defeat the incumbent president and vice president, Donald Trump and Mike Pence, in the 2020 election. Harris and Biden were inaugurated on January 20, 2021. Early life, family and education 1964 to 1990. See also, family of Kamala Harris. Kamala Baby Harris was born in Oakland, California 9 on October 20, 1964. Her mother, Shyamala Gothalan, was a Tamil Indian biologist, whose work on the progesterone receptor gene stimulated advances in breast cancer research. 11. She came to the United States from India in 1958, as a 19-year-old graduate student in nutrition and endocrinology at the University of California, Berkeley 1213 and received her Ph.D. in 1964.14. Kamala Harris's Jamaican-American father, Donald J. Harris, is of African and Irish ancestry. 15. He is a Stanford University professor of economics emeritus, who arrived in the United States from British Jamaica in 1961 for graduate study at UC Berkeley, receiving the Ph.D. in Economics in 1966.1617 Donald Harris met his future wife Shyamala Gothalan at a college club for African American students though Indian, Gothalan was allowed to join. 1819 Harris's childhood home on Bancroft Way in Berkeley in 1966, the Harris family moved to Champaign. Illinois where Kamala's younger sister Maya was born when her parents took positions at the University of Illinois. 2021 The family moved around the Midwest, with both parents working at multiple universities in succession over a brief period. 20 to Kamala Harris, along with her mother and sister, moved back to California in 1970, while her father remained in the Midwest. 23 24 21 They stayed briefly on Mildia Street in central Berkeley then at a duplex on Bancroft Way in West Berkeley, an area often called the Flatlands 25 with a significant black population. 26. When Harris began kindergarten, she was bused as part of Berkeley's comprehensive desegregation program 2000 Oaks Elementary School, a public school in a more prosperous neighborhood in northern Berkeley 25 which previously had been 95% white and after the desegregation plan went into effect became 40% black. 26 A neighbor regularly took the Harris girls to an African-American church in Oakland where they sang in the children's choir 27-28 and the girls and their mother also frequently visited the nearby African-American cultural center. 29 Their mother introduced them to Hinduism and took them to a nearby Hindu temple, where she occasionally sang Da 30 as children. She and her sister visited their mother's family in Madras now Jenna several times. 31 She says she has been strongly influenced by her maternal grandfather P.B. Gopalan 
a retired Indian civil servant whose progressive views on democracy and women's rights impressed her. Harris has remained in touch with her Indian aunts and uncles throughout her adult life. 30 Harris has also visited her father's family in Jamaica. 32 Her parents divorced when she was seven. Harris has said that when she and her sister visited their father in Palo Alto on weekends, other children in the neighborhood were not allowed to play with them because they were black. 31 When she was 12, Harris and her sister moved with their mother to Montreal, Quebec, where she and he had accepted the research and teaching position at the McGill University affiliated Jewish General Hospital. 33 Harris attended a French speaking primary school, Notre Dame Denis Ikes 34, then FACEE School 35, and finally Westmount High School B in Westmount, Quebec, graduating in 1981. 37 Wanda Kagan, a high school friend of Harris, later told CBC News in 2020 that Harris was her best friend and described how she confided in Harris that Kagan had been molested by her stepfather. 38 She said that Harris told her mother, who then insisted Kagan come to live with them for the remainder of her final year of high school. Kagan said Harris had recently told her that their friendship, and playing a role in countering Kagan's exploitation, helped form the commitment Harris felt in protecting women and children as a prosecutor. After high school, in 1982, Harris attended Howard University the historically black university in Washington, D.C. While at Howard, she interned as a mail room clerk for California Senator Alan Cranston, chair of the Economic Society, led the debate team, and joined Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. 3940 Harris graduated from Howard in 1986 with a degree in political science and economics. 41 Harris then returned to California to attend law school at the University of California. Hastings College of the Law through its Legal Education Opportunity Program LUP.42 While at UC Hastings, she served as president of its chapter of the Black Law Students Association.43 She graduated with a Juris Doctor in 1989-44 and was admitted to the California Bar. In June 1990.45 Early Career 1990-2004 In 1990, Harris was hired as a Deputy District Attorney in Alameda County. California, where she was described as an able prosecutor on the way up. 46 in 1994, Speaker of the California Assembly Willie Brown, who was in dating Harris, appointed her to the State Unemployment Insurance Appeals Board and later to the California Medical Assistance Commission. 46 Harris took a six month leave of absence in 1994 from her duties, then afterward resumed as prosecutor during the years she sat on the boards. Harris's connection to Brown was noted in media reportage as part of a pattern of Californian political leaders appointing friends and loyal political soldiers to lucrative positions on the commissions. Harris has defended her work. 46 47 48 In February 1998, San Francisco District Attorney Terrence Allen recruited Harris as an assistant district attorney. 49 There, she became the chief of the career criminal division, supervising five other attorneys, where she prosecuted homicide burglary, robbery, and sexual assault cases, particularly three strikes cases. In 2000, Harris reportedly clashed with Allen's assistant, Daryl Salomon 50 over Proposition 21, which granted prosecutors the option of trying juvenile defendants in superior court rather than juvenile courts. 51 Harris campaigned against the measure, which passed. Salomon opposed directing media inquiries about Prop 21 to Harris and reassigned her, a de facto demotion. Harris filed a complaint against Salomon and quit. 52 In August 2000, Harris took a job at San Francisco City Hall, working for City Attorney Louise Wren. 53 Harris ran the Family and Children's Services Division representing child abuse and neglect cases. Wren endorsed Harris during her BA campaign. 54 In 2001, Harris briefly dated Montel Williams. Addressing the relationship, Williams tweeted in 2020. Kamala Harris and I briefly dated about 20 years ago when we were both single. So what? I have great respect for Senator Harris. 55 District Attorney of San Francisco 2004 to 2011. See also the electoral history of Kamala Harris. Harris in 2004 with California Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi in 2002. Harris prepared to run for District Attorney of San Francisco against Allen and the incumbent and Bill Fazio. 56 Harris was the 
least known of the three candidates 57 but persuaded the Central Committee to withhold its endorsement from Hallinan. 54 Harris and Hallinan advanced to the general election runoff with 33 and 37 percent of the vote, respectively. 58 in the runoff, Harris pledged never to seek the death penalty and to prosecute three strike offenders. Only in cases of violent felonies. 59 Harris ran a forceful campaign, assisted by former Mayor Willie Brown. Senator Dianne Feinstein, writer and cartoonist Aaron Magruder, and comedians Eddie Griffin and Chris Rock. 6061 Harris differentiated herself from Hallinan by attacking his performance. 62 She argued that she left his office because it was technologically inept, emphasizing his 52% conviction rate for serious crimes despite an 83% average conviction rate statewide. 63 Harris charged that his office was not doing enough to stem the city's gun violence particularly in poor neighborhoods like Bayview and the Tenderloin, and attacked his willingness to accept plea bargains. In cases of domestic violence. 6465 Harris won with 56% of the vote, becoming the first person of color elected as district attorney of San Francisco. 66 Harris ran unopposed for a second term in November 2007. 67 Public Safety Nonviolent Crimes Harris as San Francisco District Attorney in the summer of 2005. Harris created an environmental crimes unit. 68 In 2007, Harris and city attorney Dennis Herrera investigated San Francisco supervisor the Jew for violating residency requirements necessary to hold his supervisor position. 69 Harris charged Jew with nine felonies, alleging that he had lied under oath and falsified documents to make it appear he resided in a Sunset District home necessary so he could run for supervisor in the 4th District. 70 Jew pleaded guilty in October 2008 to unrelated federal corruption charges mail fraud, soliciting a bribe, and extortion 70 and pleaded guilty the following month in state court to a charge of perjury for lying about his address on nomination forms, as part of a plea agreement in which the other state charges were dropped and Jew agreed to never again hold elected office in California. 71 Harris described the case as about protecting the integrity of our political process, which is part of the court of our democracy. 71 For his federal offenses, Jew was sentenced to 64 months in federal prison and a $10,000 fine. 72 For the state perjury conviction, Jew was sentenced to one year in county jail, three years probation and about $2,000 in fines. 73 under Harris, the D.A.S. office obtained more than 1,900 convictions for marijuana offenses, including persons simultaneously convicted of marijuana offenses and more serious crimes. 74 The rate at which Harris's office prosecuted marijuana crimes was higher than the rate under Hallinan but the number of defendants sentenced to state prison for such offenses was substantially lower. 74 Prosecutions Four low-level marijuana offenses were rare under Harris, and her office had a policy of not pursuing jail time for marijuana possession offenses. 74 Harris's successor as DA, George Gaskin, expunged all San Francisco marijuana offenses going back to 1975. 74 Violent crimes in the early 2000s, the San Francisco murder rate per capita outpaced the national average. Within the first six months of taking office, Harris cleared 27 of 70 for backlog homicide cases by settling 14 by plea bargain and taking 11 to trial. Of those trials, 9 ended with convictions and with hung juries. She took 49 violent crime cases to trial and secured 36 convictions. 75 from 2004 to 2006, Harris achieved an 87% conviction rate for homicides and a 90% conviction rate for all felony gun violations. 76 Harris also pushed for higher bail for criminal defendants involved in gun related crimes, arguing that historically low bail encouraged outsiders to commit crimes in San Francisco. SFPD officers credited Harris with tightening the loopholes defendants had used in the past. 77 In addition to creating the gun crime unit, Harris opposed releasing defendants on their own recognizance if they were arrested on gun crimes, sought minimum 90-day sentences for possession of concealed or loaded weapons, and charged all assault weapons possession cases as felonies, adding that she would seek prison terms for criminals who possessed or used assault weapons and would seek maximum penalties on gun-related crimes. 78 Harris created a hate crimes unit focusing on hate crimes against LGBT children and teens in schools. 79 in early 2006. Gwen Arajo, 
a 17-year-old American lad and a transgender teenager, was murdered by two men who later used the gay panic defense before being convicted of second-degree murder. Harris, alongside Arajo's mother Sylvia Guerrero, convened a two-day conference of at least 200 prosecutors and law enforcement officials nationwide to discuss strategies to counter such legal defenses. A.D. Harris subsequently supported AB 1160, the Gwen Arajo Justice for Victims Act, advocating that California's penal code include jury instructions to ignore bias, sympathy, prejudice, or public opinion in making their decision, also making mandatory for district attorneys' offices in California to educate prosecutors about panic strategies and how to prevent bias from affecting trial outcomes. 81 In September 2006, California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger signed AB 1160 into law. The law put California on record as declaring it contrary to public policy for defendants to be acquitted or convicted of a lesser included offense on the basis of appeals to societal bias. 8182 In August 2007, State Assemblyman Mark Leno introduced legislation to ban gun shows at the Cow Palace, joined by Harris, Police Chief Heather Thong, and Mayor Gavin Newsom. City leaders contended the shows were directly contributing to the proliferation of illegal guns and spiking homicide rates in San Francisco. Earlier that month Newsom had signed into law local legislation banning gun shows on city and county property. Leno alleged that merchants drove through the public housing developments nearby and illegally sold weapons to residents. 83 While the bill would stall, local opposition to the shows continued until the Cow Palace Board of Directors in 2019 voted to approve a statement banning all future gun shows. 80 for reform efforts death penalty Harris has said life imprisonment without a role is a better and more cost-effective punishment than the death penalty 85 and has estimated that the resultant cost savings could pay for a thousand additional police officers in San Francisco alone. 85 during her campaign Harris pledged never to seek the death penalty. 59 after a San Francisco Police Department officer, Isaac Espinoza, was shot and killed in 2004, U.S. Senator and former San Francisco Mayor Dianne Feinstein 86 U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer, Oakland Mayor Jerry Brown, and the San Francisco Police Officers Association pressured Harris to reverse that position, but she did not. 87 polls found that 70% of voters supported Harris's decision. 88 when Edwin Ramos an illegal immigrant and alleged MS-13 gang member, was accused of murdering a man and his two sons in 2009. 89 Harris sought a sentence of life in prison without a role, the decision Mayor Gavin Newsom backed. 90 Recidivism and Reentry Initiative In 2004, Harris recruited civil rights activist Lady Fass Simon to create the San Francisco Reentry Division. 91 The flagship program was a back-on-track initiative. The first of its kind free entry program for first time non violent offenders ages 1830. 92 initiative participants whose crimes were not weapon or gang related would plead guilty in exchange for a deferral of sentencing and regular appearances before a judge over a 12 to 18 month period. The program maintained rigorous graduation requirements, mandating completion of up to 220 hours of community service, obtaining a high school equivalency diploma maintaining steady employment, taking parenting classes, and passing drug tests. At graduation, the court would dismiss the case and expunge a graduate's record. 93 over six years, the 200 people graduated from the program had a recidivism rate of less than 10 percent, compared to the 53 percent of California's drug offenders who returned to prison within two years of release. Back on track earned recognition from the U.S. Department of Justice as a model for re-entry programs. The DOJ found that the cost to the taxpayers per participant was markedly lower $5,000 than the cost of adjudicating the case $10,000 and housing the low-level offender $50,000.94 in 2009. A state law the Back on Track Reentry Act, AB 750 was enacted, encouraging other California counties to start similar programs. 9596 adopted by the National District Attorneys Association as a model. Prosecutor offices involved from more Philadelphia and Atlanta have used back on track as a template for their own programs. 97 98 99 Truancy Initiative in 2006, as part of an initiative to reduce the city's skyrocketing homicide rate, Harris led a 
citywide effort to combat truancy for at risk elementary school youth in San Francisco. 100 declaring chronic truancy a matter of public safety and pointing out that the majority of prison inmates and homicide victims are dropouts or habitual truants. Peterson's office met with thousands of parents at high risk schools and sent out letters warning all families of the legal consequences of truancy at the beginning of the fall semester, adding she would prosecute the parents of chronically truant elementary students. Penalties included a $2,500 fine and up to a year in jail. 101 The program was controversial when introduced. In 2008, Harris issued citations against six parents whose children missed at least 50 days of school, the first time San Francisco prosecuted adults for student truancy. San Francisco school chief, Carlos Garcia, said the path from truancy to prosecution was lengthy, and that the school district usually spends months encouraging parents through phone calls, reminder letters, private meetings, hearings before the school attendance review board, and offers of help from city agencies and social services. Two of the six parents entered no plea but said they would work with the D.A.S. office and social service agencies to create parental responsibility plans to help them start sending their children to school regularly. 102 by April 2009. 1,330 elementary school students were habitual or chronic truants, down 23 percent from 1,730 in 2008, and down from 2,517 in 2007 and from 2,856 in 2006. 103 Harris's office prosecuted seven parents in three years, with none jail. 103 Attorney General of California 2011 to 2017 election. See also. The Electoral History of Kamala Harris 2010 Main Article, 2010 California Attorney General Election Harris's Official Attorney General Portrait Nearly two years before the 2010 election, Harris announced she planned to run. 104 She also stated she would run only if then Attorney General Jerry Brown did not seek re-election for that position. 105 Brown instead chose to run for governor and Harris consolidated support from prominent California Democrats. 106 Both of California Senators Diane Feinstein and Barbara Boxer, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, United Farm Workers co-founder Dolores Huerta, and Mayor of Los Angeles Antonio Villarides all endorsed her during the Democratic primary. 106 In the June 8, 2010, primary, she was nominated with 33.6% of the vote, defeating Alberto Torico and Chris Carey. 107 In the general election, she faced Republican Los Angeles County District Attorney Steve Cooley who led most of the race. 108 109 Cooley ran as a non-partisan 110 distancing himself from Republican gubernatorial candidate Matt Whitman's campaign. Citation needed the election was held November 2nd but after a protracted period of counting mail-in and provisional ballots, Cooley conceded on November 25. 111 Harris was sworn in on January 3, 2011. She was the first woman, the first African American and the first South Asian American to hold the office of Attorney General in the state's history. 112 2014 Main Article, 2014 California Attorney General Election Harris announced her intention to run for re-election in February 2014 and filed paperwork to run on February 12. 113 The Sacramento The 114 Los Angeles Daily News 115 and Los Angeles Times endorsed her for re-election. 116 On November 4, 2014 Harris was elected against Republican Ronald Gold, winning 57.5% of the vote to 42.5%. 117 Consumer Protection Fraud, Waste, and Abuse Harris Meets Foreclosure Victims in 2011. In 2011, Harris announced the creation of the Mortgage Fraud Strike Force in the wake of the 2010 United States foreclosure crisis. 118 That same year, Harris obtained two of the largest recoveries in the history of California's False Claims Act, $241 million from Quest Diagnostics and then $323 million from the Skin Healthcare Network, over excess state medical and federal Medicare payments. 119 120 in 2012, Harris leveraged California's economic cloud to obtain better terms in the national mortgage settlement against the nation's five largest mortgage servicers, J.P. Morgan Chase. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citigroup and Ally Bank. 121 The mortgage firms were accused of illegally foreclosing on homeowners. After dismissing an initial offer of $2 to $4 billion in relief for Californians, 
Hiris withdrew from negotiations. The offer eventually was increased to $18.4 billion in debt relief and $2 billion in other financial assistance for California homeowners. 122 123 Harris worked with Assembly Speaker John Perez and Senate President Pro Temperol Steinberg in 2013 to introduce the Homeowner Bill of Rights, considered one of the strongest protections nationwide against aggressive foreclosure tactics. 124 The Homeowner Bill of Rights banned the practices of dual tracking processing demodification and foreclosure at the same time and robo-signing and provided homeowners with a single point of contact at their lending institution. 125 Harris achieved multiple nine-figure settlements for California homeowners under the bill mostly for robo-signing and dual track abuses as well as prosecuting instances in which loan processors failed to promptly credit mortgage payments miscalculated interest rates, and charged borrowers improper fees. Harris secured hundreds of millions in relief, including $268 million from Aquint Financial Corporation, $470 million from HSBC, and $550 million from SunTrust Banks. 126 127 128 from 2013 to 2015, Harris pursued financial recoveries for California's public employees and teachers' pensions. CalPERS and Catlesters against various financial giants form a representation in the sale of mortgage-backed securities. She secured multiple nine-figure recoveries for the state pensions, recovering about $193 million from Citigroup, $210 million from S&P, $300 million from J.P. Morgan Chase and over half a billion from Bank of America. 129 131 131 132 in 2013 Harris declined to authorize a civil complaint drafted by state investigators who accused one U.S. bank, owned by an investment group headed by future U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen M. Mnuchin then a private citizen of widespread violation of California foreclosure laws. 133 During the 2016 elections, Harris was the only Democratic Senate candidate to receive a donation from M. Mnuchin. Harris was criticized for accepting the donation because M. Mnuchin reportedly profited from the subprime mortgage crisis through Wamuas Bank 134. She later voted against his confirmation as Treasury Secretary in February 2017. In 2019, Harris's campaign stated that the decision not to pursue prosecution hinged on the state's inability to subpoena Wamuas. Her spokesman said, There was no question Wamuas conducted predatory lending, and Senator Harris believed they should be punished. Unfortunately, the law was squarely on their side and they were shielded from state subpoenas because they're a federal bank. 135 In 2014, Harris settled charges she had brought against rent to own retailer Harris, incorporated on allegations of incorrect late charges, overcharging customers who pay off their contracts before the due date, and privacy violations. In the settlement, the retailer refunded $28.4 million to California customers and paid $3.4 million in civil penalties. 136 In 2015, Harris obtained a $1.2 billion judgment against for profit post secondary education company Trinthian Colleges for false advertising and deceptive marketing targeting vulnerable, low income students and misrepresenting job placement rates to students, investors, and accreditation. Agencies. 137 The court ordered Corinthian to pay $820 million in restitution and another $350 million in civil penalties. 138 That same year, Harris also secured a $60 million settlement with J.P. Morgan Chase to resolve allegations of illegal debt collection with respect to credit card customers, with the bank also agreeing to change practices that violated California consumer protection laws by collecting incorrect amounts selling bad credit card debt, and running a debt collection mill. Matt Robo signed court documents without first reviewing the files as it rushed to obtain judgments and wage garnishments. As part of the settlement, the bank was required to stop attempting to collect on more than 528,000 customer accounts. 139 In 2015, Harris opened an investigation of the Office of Ratepayer Advocates, San Diego Gas and Electric and Southern California Edison regarding the closure of San Donofre Nuclear Generating Station. California state investigators searched the home of California utility regulator Michael P. D. and found handwritten notes that allegedly showed he had met with an Edison executive in Poland, where the two had negotiated the terms of the San Donofre settlement, leaving San Diego taxpayers with a $3.3 billion bill to pay for the closure of the plant.
The investigation was closed amidst Harris's 2016 run for the U.S. Senate position. 141 141 Privacy Rights In February 2012, Harris announced an agreement with Apple, Amazon, Google, Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, and Research in Motion to mandate that apps sold in their stores display prominent privacy policies informing users of what private information they were sharing and with whom. 140 to Facebook later joined the agreement. That summer, Harris announced the creation of a Privacy Enforcement and Protection Unit to enforce laws related to cyber privacy, identity theft, and data breaches. 143 Later the same year, Harris notified a hundred mobile app peer developers of their non compliance with state privacy laws and asked them to create privacy policies or face a $2,500 fine each time a non-compliant APP is downloaded by a resident of California. 144 In 2015, Harris secured a settlement with Comcast, one totaling $33 million over allegations that it posted online the names, phone numbers and addresses of tens of thousands of customers who had paid for unlisted voice over internet protocol VOIP phone service and another $26 million settlement to resolve allegations that it discarded paper records without first omitting or redacting private customer information. 145 146 Harris also settled with house over allegations that the company recorded phone calls without notifying customers or employees. House was forced to pay $175,000, destroy the recorded calls, and hire a chief privacy officer. The first time such a provision has been included in a settlement with the California Department of Justice. 147 Criminal Justice Reform Launch of Division of Recidivism Reduction and Reentry In November 2013, Harris launched the California Department of Justice's Division of Recidivism Reduction and Reentry in partnership with district attorney offices in San Diego, Los Angeles, and Alameda County. 148 In March 2015, Harris announced the creation of a pilot program in coordination with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department called Back on Track LA. Like Back on Track, first time, nonviolent, non sexual, offenders ages between 18 and 30 failed verification. 90 men participated in the pilot program for 24 to 30 months. Assigned a case manager, participants received education through a partnership with the Los Angeles Community College District and Job Training Services. 149 Wrongful Convictions and Prison Overcrowding Harris's record on wrongful conviction cases as Attorney General has engendered criticism from academics and activists. 150 Law Professor Lara Batalon contends Harris weaponized technicalities to keep wrongfully convicted people behind bars rather than allow them new trials. 150 After the 2011 United States Supreme Court decision in Brown v. Flotter declared California's prisons so overcrowded they inflicted cruel and unusual punishment, he fought federal supervision, explaining I have a client, and I don't get to choose my client. 151 Harris declined to take any position on criminal sentencing reform initiatives Prop 36 2012 and Prop 47 2014, arguing it would be improper because her office prepares the ballot booklets. 151 John Van D. Camp, the predecessor as Attorney General, publicly disagreed with the rationale. 151 In September 2014, Harris's office argued unsuccessfully in the court filing against the early release of prisoners citing the need for inmate firefighting labor. When the memo provoked headlines, Harris spoke out against it, saying she was unaware that her office had produced the memo. 152 Since the 1940s, qualified California inmates have the option of volunteering to receive comprehensive training from the CAL FIRE in exchange for sentence reductions and more comfortable prison accommodations. Prison firefighters received about $2 a day and another $1 when battling fires. 153 LGBT rights opposing Prop 8 main article, Hauling Swarm v. Perry in 2008, California voters passed Prop 8, the state constitutional amendment providing that only marriages between a man and a woman are valid. Legal challenges were made by opponents soon after its approval, and a pair of same-sex couples filed a lawsuit against the initiative in federal court in the case of Perry v. Schwarzenegger later Hauling Swarm v. Perry. In their 2010 campaigns, California Attorney General Jerry Brown and Harris both pledged to not defend Prop 8. 154 After being elected, Harris declared her office would not defend the marriage ban, leaving the task to Prop 8 edge proponents. 155 In February 2013, Harris filed an amicus curiae brief, arguing Prop 8. 
was unconstitutional and that the initiative sponsors did not have legal standing to represent California's interests by defending the law in federal court. 156 In June 2013, the Supreme Court ruled, 5 to 4, that Prop 8's proponents lacked standing to defend it in federal court. 157 The next day, Harris delivered a speech in downtown Los Angeles urging the Ninth Circuit to lift the state banning same-sex marriages as soon as possible. 158 The state was lifted two days later. 159 Gay and trans panic defense ban in 2014 Attorney General Kamala Harris co-sponsored legislation to ban the gay and trans panic defense in court. 160 which passed and California became the first state with such legislation. 161 Michelle Gale B. Norsworthy v. Jeffrey Beard et al. In February 2014, Michelle Gale Norsworthy, a transgender inmate at California's Mule Creek State Prison, filed a federal lawsuit based on the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation's failure to provide her with what she argued was medically necessary sex reassignment surgery SRS. 162 In April 2015, a federal judge ordered the state to provide Norsworthy with SRS, finding that prison officials had been deliberately indifferent to her serious medical need. 163-164 Harris, representing CDCR, appealed the order to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals 165 arguing that psychotherapy 166 as well as the hormone therapy Norsworthy had been receiving for her gender dysphoria over the preceding 14 years were sufficient medical treatment 167 and there was no evidence that Norsworthy is in serious, immediate physical or emotional danger. 167 While Harris defended the state's position in court, she said she ultimately pushed the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation to change their policy. 168 In August 2015, while the state's appeal was pending, Norsworthy was released on a roll obviating the state's duty to provide her with inmate medical care 169 and rendering the case moot. 170 in 2019, Harris stated that she took full responsibility for briefs her office filed in Norsworthy's case and others involving access to gender-affirming surgery for trans inmates. 171 public safety anti-truancy efforts visiting Peterson Middle School Santa Clara Unified School District in 2010 in 2011. Harris urged criminal penalties for parents of truant children as she did as District Attorney of San Francisco, allowing the court to defer judgment if the parent agreed to the mediation period to get their child back in school. Critics charged that local prosecutors implementing her directives were overzealous in their enforcement and Harris's policy adversely affected families. 172 in 2013. Harris issued a report titled In School Plus on Track which found that more than 250,000 elementary school students in the state were chronically absent and the statewide truancy rate for elementary students in the 2012-2013 school year was nearly 30 percent, at a cost of nearly $1.4 billion to school districts, since funding is based on attendance rates. 173 Environmental Protection Harris prioritized environmental protection as Attorney General first securing a $44 million settlement to resolve all damages and costs associated with the Costco Bussian oil spill, in which a container ship collided with San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge and spilled 50,000 gallons of bunker fuel into the San Francisco Bay. 174 In the aftermath of the 2015 refuge oil spill, which deposited about 140,000 gallons of crude oil off the coast of Santa Barbara, California. He restored the coastline and directed her office's resources and attorneys to investigate possible criminal violations. 175 Thereafter, Operator claims All American Pipeline was indicted on 46 criminal charges related to the spill, with one employee indicted on three criminal charges. 176 In 2019, the Santa Barbara jury returned. The verdict finding claims guilty of failing to properly maintain its pipeline and another eight misdemeanor charges. They were sentenced to pay over $3 million in fines and assessments. 177 from 2015 to 2016, Harris secured multiple multi million dollar settlements with fuel service companies Chevron, BP, Arco, Phillips 66, and Konica Phillips to resolve allegations they failed to properly monitor the hazardous materials in its underground storage tanks used to store gasoline for retail sale at hundreds of California gas stations. 178 179 180 in summer 2016, 
automaker Volkswagen AG agreed to pay up to $14.7 billion to settle a raft of claims related to so-called defeat devices used to cheat emission standards on its diesel cars while actually emitting up to 40 times the levels of harmful nitrogen oxides allowed under state and federal law. 181 Harris and the chair of the California Air Resources Board, Mary D. Nichols, announced that California would receive $1.18 billion as well as Another $86 million paid to the state of California in civil penalties. 181 Law Enforcement California's Prop 69 2004 required law enforcement to collect DNA samples from any adult arrested for a felony and from individuals arrested for certain crimes. In 2012, Harris announced that the California Department of Justice had improved its DNA testing capabilities such that samples stored at the state's crime labs could now be analyzed four times faster within 30 days. Accordingly, Harris reported that the rapid DNA service team within the Bureau of Forensic Services had cleared California's DNA backlog for the first time. 182 Harris's office was later awarded the $1.6 million grant from the Manhattan District Attorney's Initiative to eliminate the backlogs of untested rape kits. 183 in 2015, Harris conducted the 90-day review of implicit bias in policing and police use of deadly force. In April 2015, Harris introduced the first of its kind principled policing, procedural justice and implicit bias training, designed in conjunction with Stanford University psychologist and professor Jennifer Eberhardt, to help law enforcement officers overcome barriers to neutral policing and rebuild trust between law enforcement and the community. All command-level staff received the training. The training was part of a package of reforms introduced within the California Department of Justice, which also included additional resources deployed to increase the recruitment and hiring of diverse special agents, an expanded role for the department to investigate officer-related shooting investigations and community policing. 184 The same year, Harris's California Department of Justice became the first statewide agency in the country to require all its police officers to wear body cameras. 185 Harris also announced a new state law requiring every law enforcement agency in California to collect, report, and publish expanded statistics on how many people are shot, seriously injured or killed by peace officers throughout the state. 186 From left to right, LAPD Chief Charlie Beck, Harris and civil rights lawyer Constance L. Rice celebrate the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Later that year, Harris appealed the judge's order to take over the prosecution of a high-profile mass murder case and to eject all 250 prosecutors from the Orange County District Attorney's Office over allegations of misconduct by Republican DA Tony Rakakos. Rakakos was alleged to have illegally employed jailhouse informants and concealed evidence. 187 Harris noted that it was unnecessary to ban all 250 prosecutors from working on the case, as only a few had been directly involved, later promising a narrower criminal investigation. The U.S. Department of Justice began an investigation into Rakakos in December 2016, but he was not re-elected. 188 in 2016. Harris announced a patterns and practices investigation into purported civil rights violations and use of excessive force by the two largest law enforcement agencies in Kern County, California, the Bakersfield Police Department and the Kern County Sheriff's Department. 189 labeled the deadliest police departments in America in a five part Guardian exposed, a separate investigation commissioned by the ACLU and submitted to the California Department of Justice corroborated reports of police using excessive force. 190 Planned Parenthood in 2016, Harris's office seized videos and other information from the apartment of an anti abortion activist who had made secret recordings and then accused Planned Parenthood doctors of illegally selling fetal tissue. Harris had announced that her office would investigate the activist in the summer of 2015. She was facing increasing criticism for not taking public action by the time Planned Parenthood filed a lawsuit against the activist. 191 190 to sex crimes in 2011, Harris obtained a guilty plea and a four year prison sentence from a stalker who used Facebook and social engineering techniques to illegally access the private photographs of women whose social media accounts he hijacked. Harris commented that the internet had opened up a new frontier for crime. 193 Later that year, Harris created the crime unit within the California Department of Justice, 
a 20 attorney unit targeting technology crimes. 194 in 2015, several purveyors of so-called revenge porn sites based in California were arrested, charged with felonies, and sentenced to lengthy prison terms. 195-196 in the first prosecution of its kind in the United States. Kevin Bollard was convicted on 21 counts of identity theft and 6 counts of extortion and sentenced to 18 years in prison. 197 Harris brought up these cases when California Congresswoman Katie Hill was targeted for similar cyber exploitation by her ex-husband and forced to resign in late 2019. 198 in 2016. Harris announced the arrest of Backpage CEO Carl Ferrer on felony charges of pimping a minor, pimping, and conspiracy to commit pimping. The water alleged that 99% of Backpage's revenue was directly attributable to prostitution-related ads, many of which involved victims of sex trafficking, including children under the age of 18. 199 The pimping charge against Ferrer was dismissed by the California courts in 2016 on the grounds of Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, but in 2018, Ferrer pleaded guilty in California to money laundering and agreed to give evidence against the former co-owners of Backpage. 200 Ferrer simultaneously pleaded guilty to charges of money laundering and conspiracy to facilitate prostitution in Texas State Court and Arizona Federal Court. 200 201 Under pressure, Backpage announced that it was removing its adult section from all its U.S. sites. 200 to Harris welcomed the move saying, I look forward to them shutting down completely. 203 The investigations continued after she became a senator, and, in April 2018, Backpage and affiliated sites were seized by federal law enforcement. 201 Transnational Criminal Organizations A.G. Harris announces the arrest of 101 gang members in Los Angeles, California. During her term as Attorney General, Harris's office oversaw major investigations and prosecutions targeting transnational criminal organizations for their involvement in violent crime, fraud schemes, drug trafficking, and smuggling. Significant arrests and seizures of weapons, drugs, cash, and other assets under Harris targeted the Iwana Cartel 2011-204 The Nuestra Familia, Nortenos, and the Vagos Motorcycle Club 2011 205 206 207 The Nortenos 2015 208 209 The Crips 2015 210 The Mexican Mafia 2016 211 And businesses in the Los Angeles Fashion District accused of operating a major money laundering hub for Mexican narcotics traffickers 2014 212 In summer 2012 Harris signed an accord with the Attorney General of Mexico, Maricela Morales, to improve coordination of law enforcement resources targeting transnational gangs engaging in the sale and trafficking of human beings across the San Isidro border crossing. The accord called for closer integration on investigations between offices and sharing best practices. 213 in 2012, Governor Jerry Brown signed into law two bills advanced by Harris to combat human trafficking. 214 in November, Harris presented a report titled The State of Human Trafficking in California 2012 at a symposium attended by U.S. Secretary of Labor Hilda Solis and Attorney General Morales, outlining the growing prevalence of human trafficking in the state, and highlighting the involvement of transnational gangs in the practice. 215 216 in early 2014. Harris issued a report titled, Gangs Beyond Borders, California and the Fight Against Transnational Crime 217 Addressing the prominent role of drug, weapons, and human trafficking, money laundering, and technology crimes employed by various drug cartels from Mexico, Armenian Power, 18th Street Gang, and MS-13 and offering recommendations for state and local law enforcement to combat the criminal activity. 218 Later that year Harris led the bipartisan delegation of state attorneys general to Mexico City to discuss transnational crime with Mexican prosecutors. 219 Harris then convened a summit focused on the use of technology to fight transnational organized crime with state and federal officials from the U.S., Mexico, and El Salvador. 220 U.S. Senate 2017 to 2021 Election Main Article. 2016 United States Senate Election in California Senate Campaign Logo 2016 After more than 20 years as a U.S. Senator from California, 
Senator Barbara Boxer announced in January 2015 that she would not run for re-election in 2016. 221 Harris announced her candidacy for the Senate seat. The following week. 221 Harris was a top contender from the beginning of her campaign. 222 The 2016 California Senate election used California's new top two primary format where the top two candidates in the primary would advance to the general election regardless of party. 222 In February 2016, Harris won 78 percent of the California Democratic Party vote at the party convention allowing Harris's campaign to receive financial support from the party. 223 Three months later, Governor Jerry Brown endorsed her. 224 In the June 7 primary, Harris came in first with 40% of the vote and won with pluralities in most counties. 225 Harris faced Congresswoman and fellow Democrat Loretta Sanchez in the general election. 226 It was the first time the Republican did not appear in a general election for the Senate since California began directly electing senators in 1914. 227 On July 19, President Barack Obama and Vice President Joe Biden endorsed Harris. 228 In the November 2016 election, Harris defeated Sanchez, capturing over 60% of the vote. Carrying all but four counties. 229 Following her victory, she promised to protect immigrants from the policies of President elect Donald Trump and announced her intention to remain Attorney General through the end of 2016. 230 231 Tenure and political positions. See also Political positions of Kamala Harris. 2017 Harris's official Senate portrait on January 28, after Trump signed Executive Order 13769. Barring citizens from several Muslim majority countries from entering the U.S. for 90 days, she condemned the order and was one of many to describe it as a Muslim ban. 232 She called White House Chief of Staff John F. Kelly at home to gather information and push back against the executive order. 233 In February, Harris spoke in opposition to Trump's cabinet picks Betsy DeVos for Secretary of Education 234 and Jeff Sessions for United States Attorney General. 235 In early March, she called on Sessions to resign, after it was reported that Sessions spoke twice with Russian Ambassador to the United States Sergei Kislyak. 236 Harris was sworn into the Senate by then Vice President Biden on January 3, 2017. In April, Harris voted against the confirmation of Neil Gorsuch to the U.S. Supreme Court. 237 Later that month, Harris took her first foreign trip to the Middle East, visiting California troops stationed in Iraq and the Zadari refugee camp in Jordan, the largest camp for Syrian refugees. 238 In June, Harris garnered media attention for her questioning of Rock Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General, over the role he played in the May 2017 firing of James Comey. The director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. 239 The prosecutorial nature of her questioning caused Senator John McCain, an ex officio member of the Intelligence Committee, and Senator Richard Burt, the committee chairman, to interrupt her and request that she be more respectful of the witness. A week later, she questioned Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General, on the same topic. 240 Sessions said her questioning makes me nervous. 241 Burr singling out of Harris sparked suggestion in the news media that his behavior was sexist, with commentators arguing that Burr would not treat the male Senate colleague in a similar manner. 242 In December, Harris called for the resignation of Senator Al Franken, asserting on Twitter, sexual harassment and misconduct should not be allowed by anyone and should not occur anywhere. 243 2018 In January, Harris was appointed to the Senate Judiciary Committee after the resignation of all Franken. 244 Later that month, Harris questioned Homeland Security Secretary Kirst Nielsen for favoring Norwegian immigrants over others and claiming to be unaware that Norway is a predominantly white country. 245-246 In May, he repeatedly questioned Secretary Nielsen about the Trump administration family separation policy, under which children were separated from their families when the parents were taken into custody for illegally entering the U.S. 247 in June, after visiting one of the detention facilities near the border in San Diego. 248 Harris became the first senator to demand Nielsen's resignation. 249 Harris Center at the 2018 commemorations of Bloody Sunday in Selma where she was invited 
to speak by John Lewis Wright 250 in the September and October Brett Kavanaugh Supreme Court confirmation hearings. He risk questioned Brett Kavanaugh about a meeting he may have had regarding the Mueller investigation with a member of Casso it Vincent Torres, the law firm founded by the president's personal attorney Mark Casso it. Kavanaugh was unable to answer and repeatedly deflected. 251 Harris also participated in questioning the FBI director's limited scope of the investigation on Kavanaugh regarding allegations of sexual assault. 252 She voted against his confirmation. Harris was a target of the October 2018 United States mail bombing attempts. 253 In December, the Senate passed the Justice for Victims of Lynching Act S. 3178. Sponsored by Harris.254 The bill, which died in the House, would have made lynching a federal hate crime.255 2019 Harris at SF Pride Parade 2019 In March 2019, after special counsel Robert Mueller submitted his report on Russian interference in the 2016 election, Harris called for U.S. Attorney General William Barr to testify before Congress in the interests of transparency.256 Two days later, Barr released a four-page summary of the redacted Mueller report, which was criticized as a deliberate mischaracterization of its conclusions. 257 Later that month, Harris was one of 12 Democratic senators to sign a letter led by Maisie Hira no questioning Barr's decision to offer his own conclusion that the president's conduct did not amount to obstruction of justice and called for an investigation into whether Barr's summary of the Mueller report and his statements at a news conference were misleading. 258 On May 1, 2019, Barr testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee. 259 During the hearing, Barr remained defiant about the misrepresentations in the four-page summary he had released the head of the full report. 260 When asked by Harris if he had reviewed the underlying evidence before deciding not to charge the president with obstruction of justice. Barr admitted that neither he, Rod Rosenstein, nor anyone in his office reviewed the evidence supporting the report before making the charging decision. 261 Harris later called for Barr to resign, and accused him of refusing to answer her question because he could open himself up to perjury, and stating his responses disqualified him from serving as U.S. Attorney General. 260 to 263 Two days later, Harris demanded again that the Department of Justice Inspector General Mike Lee Horowitz investigate whether Attorney General Barr acceded to pressure from the White House to investigate Trump's political enemies. 264 On May 5, 2019, Harris said water suppression prevented Democrats Stacey Abrams and Andrew Gillum from winning the 2018 gubernatorial election in Georgia and Florida. Abrams lost by 55,000 votes and Gillum lost by 32,000 votes. According to election law expert Richard Elhausen, I have seen no good evidence that the suppressive effects of strict voting and registration laws affected the outcome of the governor's races in Georgia and Florida. 265 In July, Harris teamed with Kirsten Gillibrand to urge the Trump administration to investigate the allegations of IR genocide by the Chinese Communist Party. In this question, she was joined by colleague Marco Rubio. 266 In November, Harris called for an investigation into the death of Roxana Hernandez, a transgender woman and immigrant who died in ICE custody. 267 268 In December, Harris led a group of Democratic senators and civil rights organizations in demanding the removal of White House senior advisor Stephen Miller after emails published by the Southern Poverty Law Center revealed frequent promotion of white nationalist literature to Breitbart website editors. 269 2020 Harris with Congressional Black Caucus women before the opening of the impeachment trial of Donald Trump on January 16, 2020, Harris delivered remarks on the floor of the Senate. Stating her views on the integrity of the American justice system and the principle that nobody, including an incumbent president, is above the law. Harris later asked Senate Judiciary Chairman Lindsey Graham to halt all judicial nominations during the impeachment trial, to which Graham acquiesced. 270 271 Harris voted to convict the president on charges of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. 272 Harris has worked on bipartisan bills with Republican co sponsors including a bail reform bill with Senator Rand Paul 273 an election security bill with Senator James Lankford 274 and a workplace harassment bill with Senator Lisa Murkowski. 275 2021 following her election as Vice President of the United States, Harris resigned from her seat on January 18, 
2021 276 prior to taking office on January 20, 2021, and was replaced by California Secretary of State Alex Padilla. 277 committee assignments while in the Senate. Heath was a member of the following committees, colon 278 Committee on the Budget Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Subcommittee on Federal Spending Oversight and Emergency Management Subcommittee on Regulatory Affairs and Federal Management Select Committee on Intelligence Committee on the Judiciary 279 Subcommittee on the Constitution Subcommittee on Oversight, Agency Action, Federal Rights and Federal Courts Subcommittee on Privacy Technology and the Law Caucus Memberships Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus 280 Congressional Black Caucus 281 Congressional Caucus for Women's Issues 2020 Presidential Election 2019 to 2020 Presidential Campaign Main Article Kamala Harris 2020 Presidential Campaign Harris formally announced her run for the Democratic nomination for President on January 27, 2019. Harris had been considered a top contender and potential frontrunner for the 2020 Democratic nomination for President. 282 in June 2018. She was quoted as not ruling it out. 283 in July 2018. It was announced that she would publish a memoir, a sign of a possible run. 284 on January 21, 2019. Harris officially announced her candidacy for President of the United States in the 2020 United States presidential election. 285 in the first 24 hours after her candidacy announcement, she tied the record set by Bernie Sanders in 2016 for the most donations raised in the day following an announcement. 286 287 more than 20,000 people attended her formal campaign launch event in her hometown of Oakland, California, on January 27. According to a police estimate. 288 during the first Democratic presidential debate in June 2019, Harris scolded former Vice President Joe Biden for hurtful remarks he made, speaking fondly of senators who opposed integration efforts in the 1970s and working with them to oppose mandatory school busing. 289 Harris's support rose by between 6 and 9 points in polls following that debate. 290 in the second debate in August. Harris was confronted by Biden and Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard over her record as Attorney General. 291 The San Jose Mercury News assessed that some of Gabbard's and Biden's accusations were on point, such as blocking the DNA testing of a death row inmate, while others did not stand up to scrutiny. In the immediate aftermath, Harris fell in the polls following that debate. 290 to 293 over the next few months, her poll numbers fell to the low single digits. 294 295 at a time when liberals were increasingly concerned about the excesses of the criminal justice system, Harris faced criticism from reformers for tough on crime policies she pursued while she was California's Attorney General. For example, in 2014, she decided to defend California's death penalty in court. 296 prior to and during her presidential campaign, an online informal organization using the hashtag number sign kite formed to support her candidacy and defend her from racist and sexist attacks. 297, 298, 299, 300, according to the Daily. Joy Reid vs. Use. The term in an August 2017 tweet saying at DR Jason Johnson at Zerlin Amixwell and I had a meeting and decided it's called the K-Hive.301 on December 3, 2019, Harris withdrew from seeking the 2020 Democratic nomination, citing a shortage of funds.302 in March 2020. Harris endorsed Joe Biden for President.303 Vice Presidential Campaign main articles. Joe Biden 2020 Presidential Campaign and 2020 Democratic Party Vice Presidential Candidate Selection Campaign Logo for the Biden-Harris Ticket In May 2019, senior members of the Congressional Black Caucus endorsed the idea of a Biden-Harris Ticket.304 In late February, Biden won the landslide victory in the 2020 South Carolina Democratic primary with the endorsement of House Whip Jim Clyburn, with more victories on Super Tuesday. In early March, Clyburn suggested Biden choose a black woman as a running mate, commenting that African American women needed to be rewarded for their loyalty. 305 in March, Biden committed to choosing a woman for his running mate. 306 on April 17, 2020, Harris responded to media speculation and said she would be honored to be Biden's running mate. 307 in late May, in relation to the murder of George Floyd and ensuing protests and demonstrations, 
Biden faced renewed calls to select a black woman to be his running mate, highlighting the law enforcement credentials of Harris and Val Dennings. 308 on June 12. The New York Times reported that Harris was emerging as the frontrunner to be Biden's running mate, as she was the only African American woman with the political experience typical of vice presidents. 309 on June 26. CNN reported that more than a dozen people close to the Biden search process considered Harris one of Biden's top four contenders, along with Elizabeth Warren, Val Dennings, and Keisha Lance Bottoms. 310 on August 11, 2020, Biden announced that he had chosen Harris. She was the first African American, the first Indian American, and the third woman after Geraldine Toronto and Sarah Palin to be picked as the vice presidential nominee for a major party ticket. 311 Harris is also the first president of the Western United States to appear on the Democratic Party's national ticket. 312 Harris became the vice president elect following the Biden Harris ticket's victory in the 2020 United States presidential election. 313 After the major networks called the election for Biden slash Harris, Harris was recorded calling Biden, saying, we did it. We did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. The quote became one of the top 10 tweets of 2020. 314 Vice Presidency 2021 Present See also, Presidency of Joe Biden Harris being sworn in as Vice President on January 20, 2021 following the election of Joe Biden as U.S. President in the 2020 election. Harris assumed office as Vice President of the United States on January 20. 2021-315 She is the United States' first female vice president, the highest-ranking female elected official in U.S. history, and the first African-American and first Asian-American vice president. 316-317 She is also the second person of color to hold the post, preceded by Charles Curtis, a native American and member of the Caw Nation who served under Herbert Hoover from 1929 to 1933.318 She is the third person with acknowledged non-European ancestry to reach one of the highest offices in the executive branch, after Curtis and former President Barack Obama. Harris resigned her Senate seat on January 18, 2021, two days before her swearing-in as vice president. Her first act as vice president was swearing in her replacement Alex Padilla and Georgia Senators Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff, who were elected in the 2021 Georgia runoff elections. 319 Harris arrives in Guatemala during her first foreign trip as vice president, June 2021. Upon taking office on January 20, 2021, the 117th Congress's Senate was divided 50 to 50 between Republicans and Democrats 320. This meant that Harris had to be frequently called upon to exercise her power to cast tie-breaking votes as President of the Senate. Harris cast her first two tie-breaking votes on February 5, 2021. In February and March, Harris's tie-breaking votes were crucial in passing the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 stimulus package proposed by President Biden since no Republicans in the Senate voted for the package. 321 322 on July 20, 2021, Harris broke Mike Pence's record for tie-breaking votes in the first year of a vice presidency 323 when she cast the seventh tie-breaking vote in her first six months 324 and cast 13 tie-breaking votes during her first year in office, the most tie-breaking votes in a single year in U.S. history, surpassing John Adams who cast 12 votes in 1790.324-325 as of March 2023. Harris is tied with John Adams for the second most tie-breaking votes by a vice president with 29 trailing only John C. Calhoun who cast 31 votes as vice president. 326 In a debunked story by the New York Post in April 2021, it was claimed that Harris's children's book Superheroes are everywhere was being distributed and Massey through welcome kits given to migrant children at a shelter in Long Beach, California. 327 In reality, only a single copy of the book had been donated by a member of the public. The writer of the original story Laura Italiano, claimed that she was forced to write the story against her will and she resigned from the New York Post as a result. 328 In April 2021, Harris indicated that she was the last person in the room before President Biden decided to 
remove all U.S. troops from Afghanistan and commented that the president has an extraordinary amount of courage and make best decisions based on what he truly believes is the right thing to do. 329 National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said that Biden insists she be in every core decision-making meeting. She weighs in during those meetings often providing unique perspectives. 330 Harris and German Chancellor Angela Merkel, July 2021 On March 24, 2021, Biden tasked Harris with reducing the number of unaccompanied minors and adult asylum seekers. She is also tasked with leading the negotiations with Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala and El Salvador. 331 Harris conducted her first international trip as vice president in June 2021 visiting Guatemala and Mexico in an attempt to address the root causes of an increase in migration from Central America to the United States. 332 During her visit, in a joint press conference with Guatemalan President Alejandro Jogmati, Harris issued an appeal to potential migrants, stating I want to be clear to folks in the region who are thinking about making that dangerous trip to the United States-Mexico border, do not come. Do not come. 333 Her work in Central America led to creation of task forces on corruption and human trafficking, the Women's Empowerment Program, and an investment fund for housing and businesses. 330 Harris met with French President Emmanuel Macron in November 2021 to strengthen ties after the cancellation of a submarine program. 334 Nearing 10 months in office, approval ratings for the president and the vice president were 38% and 28% respectively. 335 at 28 percent, Harris had the lowest approval rating of any modern VP, the prior record having been Dick Cheney 30 percent at the end of his second term. 336-337 on November 19, 2021, Harris served as acting president from 10:10 10 10 to 11:35 a.m. BST. While President Biden underwent the colonoscopy. 338, she became the first woman and the third person overall to assume the powers and duties of the U.S. Presidency under Section 3 of the 25th Amendment. 339-340 Harris's term in office has seen high staff turnovers that included the departures of her Chief of Staff, Deputy Chief of Staff, Press Secretary, Deputy Press Secretary, Communications Director, and Chief Speech Writer. An anonymous source said that they resigned because they and other staffers often feel mistreated by senior staffers. 341 Simony Sanders, senior advisor and chief spokesperson for Harris, pushed back against the complaints and defended their management style, especially for giving opportunities to black women. 341 342 343 Sanders herself resigned from her position. In December 2021, 344 awards and honors Harris at Howard University in 2017. In 2005, the National Black Prosecutors Association awarded Harris the third Good Marshall Award. That year, she was included in a Newsweek report profiling 20 of America's most powerful women. 345. The 2008 New York Times article also identified her as a woman with potential to become President of the United States. Highlighting her reputation as a tough fighter. 346 in 2013, 2020, and 2021, Time included Harris on the Time 100 Times annual list of the 100 most influential people in the world. 347, 348, 349 in 2016, the 20 over 20 Bipartisan Justice Center awarded Harris the Bipartisan Justice Award along with Senator Tim Scott. 350 Bidden and Harris were jointly named Time Person of the Year for 2020. 351 Harris was selected for the inaugural 2021 Forbes 50 over 50, made up of entrepreneurs, leaders, scientists and creators who are over the age of 50. 352 honorary degrees location date school degree gave commencement address California May 15, 2015 University of Southern California Doctor of Laws LLD. 353 354 No District of Columbia May 13, 2017 Howard University Doctor of Humane Letters DHL 355 356 Yes 357 Personal Life Vice Presidential Office Portrait of Harris and Her Husband Second Gentleman Doug and Hoff In 2021 Harris met her husband, attorney Doug and Hoff, through a mutual friend who set up Harris and Imhoff on a blind date in 2013. 358 Imhoff was an
entertainment lawyer who became partner in charge at Venable LLP's Los Angeles office. 358-359 Harris and Imhoff were married on August 22, 2014, in Santa Barbara, California. 360 Harris is a stepmother to Imhoff's two children, Cole and Ella. From his previous marriage to the film producer Kirst in Imhoff. 361 As of August 2019, Harris and her husband had an estimated net worth of $5.8 million. Harris is a multiracial American 316 and a Baptist, holding membership of the Third Baptist Church of San Francisco, a congregation of the American Baptist Church as USA. 363 364 365 366 She is a member of the Lynx. 367 368 Harris's sister, Maya, is a lawyer and MSNBC political analyst. Her brother-in-law, Tony West, is general counsel of Uber and a former United States Department of Justice senior official. 369 Her niece, Mina is the founder of the Phenomenal Women Action Campaign and former head of strategy and leadership at Uber. 370 publications Harris has written to non-fiction books and one children's book. Harris, Kamala, O.C. Hamilton, Joan 2009. Smart on Crime, a career prosecutor's plan to make us safer. San Francisco, C.A., Chronicle Books. ISBN 978-08118-6528-9. Harris, Kamala 2019. Superheroes are everywhere. London, Penguin Young Readers Group. ISBN 978-19-84837-493. Harris, Kamala 2019. The Truths We Hold, An American Journey. London, Penguin. ISBN 978-1984886224. See also Biography Portal Flag California Portal Flag United States Portal of Politics Portal of Law Portal Black Women in American Politics List of African American United States Cabinet Members List of African American United States Senators List of Female State Attorneys General in the United States List of Female United States Cabinet Members List of Female United States Presidential and Vice Presidential Candidates List of United States Politicians of Indian Descent List of United States Senators from California Women in the United States Senate